been going around and uh, talking to young students from fourth grade all the way through to PhDs. And usually the questions that people ask me was, where did you guys keep your guns? Uh, why didn't you like white people? I think still in schools were still recognized as a black nationalist hate movement. And there was never hate. And as a matter of fact, one of the things that, that drew me to the Black Panther Party is that they loved the people so much. That in, that in order to do that kind of work, in order to be that focused, you had to really love the people. The Black Panthers are one of the most misunderstood civil rights groups in American history. Started in 1966 by Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale as a way to protect Black communities against police brutality, the Panthers are often depicted as a violent organization, but many of their contributions to the communities they served, especially in terms of health care, are left out of history textbooks. I think the dominant message from, from almost every textbook I've seen um, is putting the Panthers in um, what civil rights scholars have called the, a, the declension narrative, um, which is basically this idea that, um, you know, once the Black Power movement starts, um, but really after King's death in 1968, um, the civil rights movement declines and you get these black radicals who are just demanding too much and nonsensically turning to violent tactics. I, I don't think I've seen a single textbook that mentions the um, hundred or so social programs that the Black Panthers ran. They're anti-capitalists, they're socialists, and they work with all poor people. In fact, they saw themselves as continuing among the King's work. People forget when King was assassinated, he was leading what he called the Poor People's Campaign. King advocated as a democratic socialist against the what he called the exploited tenets of materialism and capitalism. And the goal of the Black Panther Party was to expose the problems in the society and then show that they weren't static, that they didn't have to be that way, but that there were ways in which to make those changes that were necessary. In particular, free quality health care was one of the key elements of the program of the Black Panther Party. Cleo Silvers came to the South Bronx in the 60s as a healthcare volunteer and later joined the Harlem branch of the Black Panthers. Now, you know, the South Bronx is the um, congressional district in the United States with the lowest income per capita. It was then and continues to be today. So the conditions in the South Bronx were something that I had never seen before. The area's main hospital was known for its horrendous treatment of its predominantly black and brown patients. In fact, conditions were so bad that in 1970, Silvers took part in a protest where community activists, including the Panthers, occupied the hospital for one day. Well, Lincoln Hospital was known as the uh, butcher shop. Was, conditions were really horrible. People were waiting for 72 hours to get seen. There was no heat in the emergency room. There's really bad stories about uh, Lincoln Hospital and, and what could happen to you if you had to go to Lincoln Hospital. When we talk about the impact of racism and the healthcare system, I mean, there is a long history of medical discrimination. You know, we can think of the history um, that involves Black bodies being used as guinea pigs. Black women and women of color going to the doctors and getting illegally sterilized. And so this has caused a lot of mistrust. And then your zip code matters. Black communities that are in disenfranchised area, we have um, a history of not being protected. And so part of the history of medical discrimination is what the Panthers were trying to fight. Everything from first aid, they had a free ambulance program, they had sickle cell anemia testing, um, they had gynecological exams, optometry services, I mean, physical exams. There are tons of um, services that the Black Panther Party offered when we talk about healthcare. We designed a program to go door to door and really test for diseases like tuberculosis, anemia, diabetes. These are preventable diseases. 
We'd go in and we'd, there would be an elderly person in, in some apartment who really needed to see a doctor, but they were afraid to go to the doctor. And that's how we would be able to refer them to a place where, where they would be seen and be helped before the illness, whatever illness they have, got too difficult for them. They was in the community educating, offering um, tools to medically empower uh, the Black community. And much of that um, understanding of the Black Panther Party has been written out of the public um, perceptions of the organization. It has a lot to do with the FBI and COINTELPRO. COINTELPRO, which stands for Counterintelligence Program, was the FBI's legal surveillance scheme. They looked at the Panthers as a threat. And so they did everything you can think of from infiltrating the organization to uh, pushing lies in the media. The Panthers were actually about restorative care. They were actually about healing the community, um, mind, body, and soul. And, and that's placed on the margins of the history of the party. The party disbanded in 1982, but the legacy of the Black Panthers continues to this day. Uh, many of the party programs were community-based and community-run. So the party would start them, they would establish them, and then before long, the community takes them over and the community runs them. So you could point to community clinics, health clinics, food programs, food banks, um, free bus in the prison programs, and this goes on. They're still alive and well today as extensions and continuations of programs that the party started. There are many kids that go to my high school that get their health care from the Carolyn Downs Clinic that was started by the Black Panther Party, and they don't know the history of where it came from. And it's really sad because if students knew where their health care was coming from, they would gain lessons about how to organize and struggle against those barriers today. The Panthers' work drew attention to health care disparities that COVID-19 has made even more apparent today. And their legacy of community care is carried on by activists like Dr. Ayla Stanford who founded the Black Doctors COVID-19 Consortium in Philadelphia. April 3rd, 2020, a report came out, Philadelphia Tribune, that African-Americans were being diagnosed and dying from coronavirus at rates greater than every other group uh, in our city. We now know that's pervasive throughout the nation. And it was like the first time I sat in medical school, naive, excited. I was realizing my dream. 22 and listening to a teacher say yeah there's these social determinants of health and black people have poor health outcomes they have a shorter life expectancy they do worse with cancer hypertension diabetes surgery and so when i heard it on april 3rd it was like ding i've been here before only it was 23 freaking years ago that I heard this same story. And I said, no, not this time. I'm not gonna sit and listen. I'm not gonna internalize that pain and just accept it as truth. I wanna change the narrative. The Black Doctors COVID-19 Consortium brought COVID testing and medical aid into Black neighborhoods that typically have reduced access to healthcare. They've tested more than 26,000 people for COVID-19 and have provided basic health services like flu shots. Now the consortium is holding COVID vaccination clinics for highly impacted communities. Just like racism is, is baked into every other aspect of, of capitalism in this country, it's baked into the healthcare system. Um, and I think because of that, the free and equitable access to healthcare has always been a part of the black freedom struggle, especially during the civil rights movement. And I think if we're ever to, um, you know, change the healthcare system in this country, we have to um, learn from the civil rights movement and, and, and the folks who, who fought for free and equitable access to healthcare in the past.